Would you stand up with us today and open your word up to the book of Matthew, Matthew's gospel, chapter number five. And I want to uh, continue a, a message, a series called Blessed. Uh, and, and it just so happens to ha- be our uh, theme for the year. And I'm kind of introducing the first part of this year. And we'll be uh, alluding back to this all throughout the year. I do want to uh, say welcome to anyone uh, here this morning. If this is your first time with us, either here in the sanctuary or watching by online today, we are so glad that you have gathered in. And uh, if this is your first time, why don't you uh, on the uh, webpage or on uh, Facebook, right in there and say, my first time uh, being with CFA today. And we just want to reach out to you and say, thank you for watching. We have people watching around the world, around the states, different places. And we know of one, I know of one in Bangladesh that is watching us this morning. And uh, we we welcome him and the family and uh, Susan, um, friends of Susan, they have supported them. And uh, it is, um, so we we look forward to connecting with you. God bless you. And so y'all look good. How many feel good this morning? Amen. Amen. Glory. Y'all look, well, I may not see you smile. I, I know you got your mask. And, and can I say again, thank you for, um, for doing that, for being, because I, I saw the sign up here. Mass is not, it's also, it's not just about us. It's about uh, keeping other people. I know there's different thoughts on, but I'm, thank you for uh, your, your commitment to that. And uh, we're praying, we, we're still believing this, this uh, virus is done in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm, I'm believing that. I, I am believing. I can't wait to get back to our relaxed times that we can hug again, shake hands again. At some point, that's going to come because how many of you huggers and you like that? Yeah, come on. Amen. You, you know who you are, but uh, it's, gonna, it's good. So glad you're here. I'm in the book of Matthew chapter number five. And I, as I said, I have begun a couple of weeks ago this series. I didn't start it with Matthew 5, but last week I told you uh, we began on the Beatitudes. And, and that's kind of where we're at today. And I'm in verse number one. Everybody got your Bible? Say amen. Glory. Let's get with it. Let's open up the word. When he saw the crowds, he went up on the mountain, verse 1 of Matthew 5. And he, after he sat down, his disciples came to him. And then he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now the word blessed can be interchangeable with the word um, happy. Uh, it it's, can mean the same thing. <clears throat> blessed or happy are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted. Now, these are tough. These are tough. Then it says, blessed are those who are persecuted or happy. It almost doesn't make sense, does it? Happy are those who are persecuted. Somebody may think, there's nothing happy about that. But in God's plan, God says, for righteousness sake, or it says, for they shall be called sons of God. If you're a peacemaker and if you're persecuted for righteousness sake, God says, the kingdom of heaven is yours. How many pay off? That sounds pretty good. The kingdom of heaven. Verse 11. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Okay, how many's got a smile on your face today because you're happy? I can't see it. You can see mine. You at home smiling at your family, smile back at us. But how many are you happy in Jesus this morning? How many, no matter what has gone wrong in the past month or the past year, you are still happy, satisfied, and there's a joy deep down inside of you today. Amen? Father, I want to thank you. Lord, there's just some maybe watching, whether in this room or whether by way of um, 
our telecast that's going to ones that some we don't even know. But they're watching today. And they're facing some very tough moments, some very tough issues. But today is going to set somebody free. I believe that. In the almighty name of Jesus. I believe in God. There's a hope that is arising with them today that they feel I'm going to be able to make it because I know Jesus and I trust him. Father, I ask in these next few minutes that you would just cause the word to become alive to us and we praise you for the anointing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, you may be seated this morning. Praise God. Happy. Happy. Blessed. Our the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So I want, to, I want to ask you a question. How many you want to be happy? How many like being happy rather than, than unhappy? Or how many just don't care? You, you, I, I want to be happy. I like being happy. There are times I'm not happy, but I still got joy. Rejoice in the Lord always, and, a, and, a, and again, I say rejoice. We remember we talked what, what, uh, about joy last week, one part of it, exceedingly glad, talks about jumping for joy. Now, I'm not going to do the jumping today, but I uh, did enough of that last Sunday morning. <laughs> well, maybe not. But joy, happiness. So, two questions I'm going to ask you today. First question is this, is where does happiness not come from? And secondly, where does happiness come from? Let's get to the first one. Matthew 5, 3 says, blessed are the poor in spirit for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. So where does happiness not come from? It comes from having a new car. Not. It comes from having all your bills paid. Well, that's happy, but not. Where does happiness not come from? You see, Christ's Sermon on the Mount contains a very powerful, practical revelation of the principles and standards by which God calls all of us. It's the constitution of our faith, really. He calls all of us to live as, as believers. And, and of course, living up to these standards, they're only possible through faith in Jesus, the Son of God, and, and through the power of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus is saying happiness does not come from circumstances because he lists people who are meek, poor, hungry, and people who are persecuted, and people who are mourning. And, and he says that's not where happiness comes from. He says happiness does not come from your external circumstances. How I many know it comes from your internal attitude? Because whatever man thinks, so is he. Whatever's going on in your mind right now is what we become. If it's a consistent thing, it's what we are. If you're just always on the internal uh, high thermometer attitude-wise and you're just, you're just not, uh, you, you're about to boil over and that's where you're always at, guess what? That's what your life is all about. And there's not much happiness with that. Or if you're always sad and, and you're always de uh, depressed and always seeing the negativity. You know, how many have ever been around a negative person? Now, if you are one, just, you know, maybe don't say anything. Or maybe say, oh me, help me Jesus. But always negative, always seeing the worst, always, uh, well, it, it's going good now, but it's going to change. I, I, well, you know, when something good happens, well, something bad's going to happen. There are people that's what they live their lives. I'm talking about believers today, that it's always a negative thing. See, happiness does not come from your external circumstances, it comes from an internal attitude. See, be reminded that Paul was, or that Jesus was in Rome when the whole world was Greek culture at that time. And, and in the Greek culture, they had these Greek gods and, and uh, that we call Greek mythology. And, and I want to remind you something about Greek mythology. It's myths. Because you know the word for myths? It's called Lies. Because they're not true, they're stories. But in Greek mythology, how many of you studied Greek mythology in high school or wherever? So Greek mythology, 
In that, Homer said that the gods were happy in themselves because they were not affected in the world of men who are subject to poverty, weakness, and death. And so that was mythology. But so now Jesus in that culture where he was living at that time, here's where Jesus comes along and says, there's a true God and this is not a story and he's happy. He's happy in himself. He's happy and the reason that we can be happy is because we know a happy God. That was a good place to shout amen. See, God is happy. And as a matter of fact, the word blessed refers to God all throughout the word of God. The same word here in 1 Timothy or in 1 Timothy 1.11, it says, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. That word blessed is the same Greek word that says God is happy. How many know you serve a happy God? If we know we serve a happy God, why aren't we? Because according to the gospel, are you okay saying that? I serve a happy God. See, according to the gospel of the happy God, God is happy. And I'm telling you, God is not mad. He's not angry at you, mad at you. He's a happy God. And until we get that through our heads, we won't be happy either. And until we get that, our lives will become what we're thinking negatively all the time. And the way to happiness is an ongoing, intimate, vital, passionate. Okay, I want to talk to some passionate people. The Bible says the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and a violent, passionate, take it by force. Any passionate people in the house that love Jesus with all your heart, all your soul and all your mind and all your strength, everything that's in you, that's happiness. See, that's happiness. No matter what you're going through, it's not circumstances that bring happiness. It's not money that brings happiness. So let me talk about Solomon for a moment. Remember Solomon? Ecclesiastes 1.1, if you'd like to turn over there, it says, these are the words of the teacher, King David's son who ruled in Jerusalem. Ecclesiastes 1.2, he had a terrible look on life. He said it this way. He said, everything is meaningless, says the teacher, completely meaningless. I'm gonna read through this litany of scripture here. Verse 1, Ecclesiastes 2, 1 says, I said to myself, this is from another translation. It says, come on, let's try pleasure. Let's look for the good things of life. But I found that this too is meaningless. So I said, laughter is silly. What good does it do to seek pleasure? Verse 3, after much thought, I decided to cheer myself with wine. Let me tell you, alcohol won't make you happy. And while still seeking wisdom, I clutched at foolishness. And in this way, I tried to experience the only happiness most people find during their brief life in this world. Verse 4, I also tried to find meaning by building huge homes for myself and by planting beautiful vineyards. I made gardens and parks, filling them with all kinds of fruit trees. You might say, well, hey, he's got all this stuff. That'd make me happy. Verse six, I built reservoirs to collect the water to irrigate my many flourishing groves. I bought slaves, both men and women and others who were born in my household. I owned, I also owned large herds and flocks and more than any of the kings who had lived in Jerusalem before me. I collected great sums of silver and gold, the treasure of many kings and provinces. See, Solomon had rulers and potentates who would just come to see all that he had. I hired wonderful singers, both men and women, and I had many beautiful concubines. I had everything a man could desire. Verse 9, so I became greater than all who had lived in Jerusalem before me, and my wisdom never failed me. Verse 10, anything I wanted, I would take. I denied myself no pleasure. I even found great pleasure in hard work, a reward for all my labors. Verse 11, here is the detail. But as I looked at everything I had worked so hard to accomplish, it was all so meaningless like chasing the wind. There was nothing really worthwhile anywhere. I don't care what you got. Your pleasure and your happiness is not in what you got. It is in who you are and who has you, and his name is Jesus Christ. We can't comprehend how wealthy Solomon was, and we won't. But I, I, I want to tell you a few things that the Bible says about him. First of all, do y'all know that Solomon had no silverware in his house? He had goldware. All of the utensils that were in his home were made of gold, solid gold, pure gold. Not just caked on gold, pure gold. 
And it says that he was so wealthy that he made silver as common as rocks. In other words, all of Israel, everybody had silver because Solomon was so wealthy. He had hundreds of purebred horses, thousands of stables, manicured gardens, finest foods, everything that he, if he wanted lobster every night or if he wanted, <laughs> come on, I, he, he could eat in the finest restaurants at the time. Well, his house, it, it was amazing. Everything he wanted, he could buy. He had thousands of servants and hundreds of women, and he had a home that cost three in today's economy. He had a home that cost $3 billion. Anybody here like to try to have that kind of money and be, try to be happy with that? No, you know. But here's what he said at the end of his life, emptiness, emptiness. It's all emptiness. Everything that this world has is emptiness. Remember when Jesus said in Luke 12, 15, he said, watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. A man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. So many are trying to get a leg up and trying to get this and trying to get that, but don't have true happiness in their heart. The reason is happiness is a spiritual need and you cannot meet a spiritual need with a natural source. Let me say that again. You cannot meet a spiritual need with a natural source. It can't be done because nothing on this earth can make you happy except a relationship with Jesus and only a relationship with a happy God. And God is happy and you'll only find happiness in him. So if you're looking for something to satisfy, you're trying. Uh, no, I believe a man should work, a woman should uh, uh, a family. And, and we, if we don't work, we don't eat. But I'm telling you, your job after 40 hours or however many hours of work you week, that your pleasure is not in that. Yes, you get a good feeling that, yes, that's what we're called to do. But your happiness is not in the end of the week and getting a paycheck. Your happiness is 24-7, having your life hid in the arms of God, and he's there in your life 24-7. That is your happiness, because when happy times may be diminished in your life from day to day, the joy of the Lord is still your strength, and that is where you find your happiness. Anybody happy? Our culture emphasizes what we own. We judge people by their possessions, clothes, cars, homes, jewelry, and our, our self-worth becomes based upon our net worth, and, and possessions only become a problem when we see them, though, as the answer to our happiness problem. Well, if I only had, if I only had this, if I only had this, what else do you only had if you wish you had that? Do you think it's going to make you a little happier? Money can buy a nice bed, but it can't buy a good night's sleep. Money can buy a large house, but it can't make it a home. Money can buy the best education but it can't make you wise. Money can buy the best doctors, but not good health. Money can buy the biggest parties, but not good friends. It can buy the most extravagant vacations, but not have a peace in your heart. What does it profit a man if he gains the whole world yet loses his soul? That's where happiness does not come from, but I want to quickly get to the second question. Where does happiness come from? Simple. Say with me, happiness comes from God. Psalmist said it this way in Psalms 9-1. You say, you know, this, that, pastor, this is simple. I know this. Do you? Every day, is it resonated in your life? Psalms 9-1 says, I will praise you, O Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all your wonders. I will be glad and rejoice in you, and I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. Psalms 146 verse 5 says, happy is the one whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God. Anybody here that you have the God of Jacob in your life? How many, it just, it just makes you shout. You almost get up and, and, and jump like I did last week. Happiness is having the God of Jacob, the Lord God, the maker of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them. He remains faithful forever. See, Jesus begins with that, our inner attitude of the heart, not the outer actions. Understand he's talking about being, not doing. Before you do, you gotta be. Let me say that again. Before you do, you gotta be, because if you do and not be, you, you, you're not gonna be happy with what's been done because you're just doing and not being. Y'all with me? <laughs> what are you talking about being? Being a child of God. That's crucial to us 
to understand as believers, happiness is not found in the external, but the eternal. It's not on the outside, but the inside. It's not based on what you do, but who you are. Happiness is not about doing, it's about being. It's the be attitudes, not the do attitudes. It's an attitude that comes from being, not an attitude that comes from doing. How many has an attitude of being who God has called you to be? Come on, y'all alive this morning, amen? We're called to be, and then we can do. See, that's what they are. It's an attitude that you have because you are, not because you do. I'm not saying that we shouldn't do. I'm not saying that we shouldn't do the right things and try to do things that are right. I'm not saying that this morning. You have to understand that you do because you are, and you aren't because you do. Did you get that? Let me say it again. (laughs) You do because you are, and you aren't because you do. You don't become because you do, you do because he did it and you believe it, and therefore you are. In other words, I am a child of the great I am. And everything else flows from that. See, the Messiah brings the blessing, and you can't do it without the Messiah. Religion tells you that if you do, you will be, and that's not true. If you be, then you'll do. And because you can't do it without Christ, if Christ is your Lord, doesn't matter what comes, you are the child of God. And the Messiah brings your happiness. If you've studied much or if you've read in Scripture, you'll, you'll see some three, I'm going to share with a fourth one, primary sects or sections of Judaism, Jewish religion. We heard about the fat, sad, Sadducees, the Pharisees, and, and we've also heard about the Zealots. We've, we've read some of that in Scripture. But there were four main groups that had their different components of what would bring happiness to your life. These four main sections were when Jesus was on, on earth, and pro, the reality is society has not come very far in 2,000 years because these four sections are still in society today, not by the same names, but by the same attitudes. First one was this, was the Essenes, the Essenes. They believed that happiness came from going out, getting away from society, in other words, separating from the world. The Jewish historian Josephus, he records that the Essenes, they existed in large numbers and thousands throughout the Roman and, uh, uh, and Judea, and, but they were fewer numbers than the Pharisees and the Sadducees, which were the other two main sects at that time. But this group of people, the Essenes, they lived in various cities, but they congregated in communal life dedicated to voluntary poverty, daily immersion, baptism, and, and asceticism, which asceticism is, is a renunciation of material possessions and physical pleasures. They would abandon sensual pleasures and, and lead an abstinent lifestyle in the pursuit of redemption, salvation, or spirituality. But you got to understand that all of these have a little bit of truth in them, but they have so much error that you can't see the truth. And for, for example, Jesus said, come out from among them and be separate. And we're to be separate in this world, but he didn't mean to live in a commune. Because if you live in the commune, you're never winning anybody to the Lord. And, and that's what the Essenes believe. They believe that happiness come from totally, physically, spiritually, everything separated from the world. Never be around anybody else. They were the zealots. They believe that happiness came from going against the government. They believe that happiness came from power. Everybody see that today? They wanted to overthrow the government and be in control because happiness comes from political revolution. The right government will make us happy. Let me tell you, I don't care what government is in this world. It is not the government's fault to make you or our process to make us happy. It is happiness is only in Jesus Christ. Whoever's setting in the White House, whoever's setting in the king or queen's place in England, whoever's setting in the mayor's house, it does not matter because I'm a child of God. Okay, y'all getting really quiet on me here this morning. Happiness is not in political power because I can be and do, period, in Jesus. Amen, pastor. I'll do it myself. I'll, I'll amen myself this morning. Because that's where our happiness is. It's not based on who is or who isn't. It's based on he is. And he is in charge. 
See, we're not happy because we're not in power. People believe that today. If I were in power, I would be happy. Happiness comes from power. That's what the zealots believe. The Sadducees, they believe that happiness came from going ahead. In other words, just go ahead and do what you want to do. They didn't believe in the afterlife. They didn't believe in the resurrection. They believe that once you die, it's it. Grab all the gusto you can. You only go around once in your life, and that's nothing new. That's been around for thousands and thousands of years to just live for today, live for yourself. There's no consequences, no rewards, just live for today. That's the, Zel- the Sadducees, the Pharisees. They believe that happiness comes from going back. They were the traditionalists. Are y'all still with me this morning? They were the traditionalists. They didn't want to change. They wanted everything like it was. And the problem was that their tradition became the Bible. And there are people just like that today. They believe that happiness comes from keeping the law and every part of it. I'm not, please understand, I'm not saying go away from the word of God. But they believe that happiness came from keeping the law every part of it. In other words, happiness comes from your performance. You'll never be happy if it comes to that. Because how many know that you cannot perform good enough to merit the grace of God? Happiness comes to your performance and criticizing others that don't match up to you. It, happiness comes from keeping the law and every part of it. It comes from being perfect and criticizing everybody else that's not. Happiness comes from the past and my performance. That is wrong. Happiness comes from being a child of God in the mercy fold of him. So the Essenes, glory, amen. So the Essenes... They believe happiness comes from going out. The zealots believed it from going against. The Sadducees believed in going ahead. The Pharisees believed in going back. But Jesus declared that happiness comes from going up. It comes from God because God is happy and God alone blesses. You can't live for the past. You can't live for today. You can't live for power. You can't live for yourself, but you can live for God. Anybody here can lift your hand to the Lord and say, I am blessed because I'm living for him. See, the other thing that was wrong in society and in the church of religion in that day is that Jesus came. They had a misconception about the Messiah, and that misconception is even still here today because even though the Messiah has come, they believed that the Messiah was going to set up an earthly kingdom right here on the earth and that and at that time and that that would bring them happiness you even see the disciples in acts chapter one they said lord when are you going to set up your kingdom it was not about a kingdom but a kingdom and the kingdom was not on earth it was in them it was in the glories of heaven See, understand, he said, the kingdom is not of the world, it's within you because there's a kingdom that reigns on the inside of you and that's where happiness comes from. The key to being happy. Anybody here want to be happy? Susan, would you come? The key to being happy is all about the word, say it with me, kingdom. The word kingdom comes from two words, king and dominion. The key, kingdom, king dominion. The key to being happy is for the kingdom. The king to have dominion in you and over you. Then you're happy. Even if you're poor in spirit, even if you're meek and mild, if you're in a battle, even if you're hungry, you're thirsty, you're persecuted or mourning, you can still be happy because the king is in you and he has dominion. The key to happiness is not being in charge. The kingdom of happiness is serving the king of kings and the lord of lords. Where the king is, there is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So, if there's no righteousness in your life, and there's no peace in your life, and there's no joy in your life, is the king in charge of your life? Happiness is found in him. Jesus was saying on the Sermon on the Mount, Without me, you don't have a chance to be happy. Without me, you don't have a chance to be blessed because it comes through me and God's the only one that can bless. Because we've already said, you'll never be happy until you give your life and control of your life to the king, until the kingdom is within you, until the king has authority over you and decisions in your life. If the king has authority and if you're a believer and you're not letting the king sit on the throne, you're not gonna be happy because happiness comes from the king. I know I've said that so many times already, but I want to get that in our spirits today. If you don't know Jesus, you don't have a chance at happiness because all of it comes to Jesus. Stand with me this morning. See, on the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus was saying, I am happy, and if you want to be happy, you got to be happy through me. I like what Psalms 1-1 says. 
How happy is the one who does not walk in the advice of the wicked or stand in the pathway with sinners or sit in the company of mockers. Instead, his delight is in the Lord's instruction and he meditates on it day and night. And he, that person, is like a tree planted beside flowing streams that bears its fruit in seasons, in its season, and whose leaf does not wither because whatever he does prospers. Verse 4 says, the wicked aren't like this. Instead, they're like chaff that the train, that the wind blows away. Verse 5, therefore the wicked will not stand up in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to ruin. Go in the Psalms 511, it says it this way. But let all those who rejoice, okay? I'm going to take a poll right now. How many rejoicing? today. How many's happy? Come on. How many's happy? How many's happy? Look around. Is your hand up? Everybody's hand up? Everybody happy? Okay. Here's, so he said, a lot of all those that are happy are those that rejoice. You got happiness in you. That's what he says to do. Put your trust in the Lord. If you're happy in the Lord, you know your happiness doesn't come from any other part of society. Your happiness comes from the Lord. So when those trying moments come, can you still say, I'm happy. I still trust you, Lord persecution I still trust you Lord had a bad day I still trust you Lord it's so simple but it's so simple sometimes we we miss it he said that all those rejoice who put their trust in you let them ever shout for joy okay how many's happy again can I see your hand So if you trust him, then you're going to shout for joy. Any shouters in the house this morning? Anybody that can just shout into God with a voice of triumph? See, that's the joy. Shout because God says he defends you. Okay, third point. Anybody happy this morning? Pastor, I've already said it. I'm not. I'm happy. I'm happy, okay? I'm going to try it again. Anybody happy this morning? Number one, you trusting. Number two, you shout. And number three, you love the name of the Lord. Anybody happy loves the name of Jesus this morning? Jesus is the King of kings, and he is the Lord of lords. And then he says, be joyful. If you're trusting him, If you're shouting, and if you love the name, there is no question what's coming out of your mouth. The joy of the Lord is our strength. I'm happy in the Lord this morning because this is what the Scripture says. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Not the things first, the kingdom of God. King, dumb, king in dominion over us. I'm happy in the Lord. Father, so much in this world could try to attack our happiness. But my happiness and my joy, it is found in you. It is for you. It is in you. And without you, there is no joy. And I worship you and I thank you today for who you are. Today, I want to celebrate the happiness that Jesus brings. If you're watching online, if you're watching here in this sanctuary, which I hope you are, I want you to take your elements today. This is where our joy comes from. Because Jesus Christ, he died on the cross, he rose again, and he is coming again one day. That is my hope. The Bible speaks about it in Titus, the blessed hope of the church, that he's coming again. Paul put it this way. He said, for I received of the Lord when he wrote what the Lord said. And what I also passed on to you, the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Can we just take a moment and just thank God for these elements, what they represent? Father, I thank you your son Jesus Christ he died for me rose again it's coming again and 
And the word says, if I call on the name of the Lord, I shall be saved. If I believe that and I appropriate that from my life, you said that I'm free of my sins because of the grace of God. If I confess to you, repent before you, God, you said you'd come in and cleanse me of every sin and of all unrighteousness. I thank you for your blessings today. And I honor you. And I give you glory. In the name of Jesus. Would you cleanse us now as we partake of these elements? Every sin, every everything that we've allowed to become commonplace in us, God, would you cleanse us as we receive these elements today in Jesus' name? Could we take the bread together, celebrating the body of our Lord and Jesus Christ that says by his stripes we are healed. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To the glory of God. I gotta tell you another miracle that happened this week. Kathy Herndon, she had surgery, cancer surgery this week. But God touched her even through the surgery and they did not have to do what she was expecting, what they said was going to have to do. And in the name of Jesus, she is healed by the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why we can celebrate and happy today because by his stripes, we are healed in the name of Jesus. The Bible says in the same manner, he took the cup. And he said this, this cup is a new covenant in my blood, do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, he says, you just show the Lord's death until he comes. How many's happy this morning that Jesus is your Lord and your Savior and he is coming again? Could we take the cup together this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. God, I praise you this morning that your son has set us free, that your son, Jesus Christ, you've come into our life. And I want to worship you and I want to praise you this morning today, God. God, there may be some watching live today here in our audience or in the audience in their homes today. Father, that maybe not know you as their Lord and Savior. And I, God, Thank you for doing the miracle in them. Look, yes, we have to appropriate. Yes, we have to ask. Yes, we have to repent before you. But God, you said if we confess our sins, you would be faithful and just to forgive us. Maybe you feel like I just I've tried everything else. And at the end of the day, I've not been happy. Why don't you try Jesus? Why don't you give him a chance in your life? And I'm going to ask you in this room, if you don't know Jesus Christ as a pastor today, I, I need Jesus. I want to receive him as my Lord. You may want to just, would you just slip up a hand? I want to pray with you. If you're watching live today, there's a place down at the bottom on our live page that says I'm clicking this for salvation, raising my hand to come to know Jesus. I'm going to pray a prayer. Or if on our Facebook, write it in there. Today I give my heart to the Lord. And I want to pray a simple prayer. I, I would, I'd encourage you to pray it with me. And I can't pray your prayer, but if you believe it and receive what you're saying, Jesus Christ will become your Lord and Savior. Would everyone say, Jesus, I confess my sins to you. I need you to come into my heart and forgive me of all my sins. And I know you said you would. That if I'd call on the name of the Lord, that I'll be saved. And today, I'm asking you to come in. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for your peace. And I give you all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer a minute, let me tell you, you are saved. You have been cleansed of every sin. And your happiness is now found in Jesus. Remember a few moments ago, and as you're closing in, we're closing in this service this morning, happiness is found in the name of Jesus. I just want to sing this one time in closing. It's an old 
song, course of the church, it simply says it this way. There's just something about that name. Sing it with me. His name is Jesus. Jesus. our joy, our peace, our being blessed. It's not found in the circumstances or the stuff of this world, but it is found in you. I thank you that I'm happy in your presence. In Jesus' name, say with me, amen. Somebody shout, I am happy. That sounded so good. Say it again. I am I'm happy. Well, go happy, people, in the Lord, because the Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. And may the Lord's face shine upon you and give you peace. God bless you this morning.